So, what's new? <laughs> okay, since we don't have too much time, if any of you uh, have any urgent question, you may come here right now, this minute. I count to three. And if nobody come up, that means from now to the end of the retreat, no question. <clears throat> One, two, no question? No pregunta? And you're the only one. Oh, come here. <laughs> Where are you from? Okay, I meet you too. I love you too. Ah, wonderful. You're welcome. What is the question? <laughs> so much to say. Yes, say everything. Say everything. These things, you are the only one here. You have the whole planet. <laughs> so shy. Come here, then you're not normal shy. Come sit here. You want to sit here? You're shaking. Oh my goodness, what to do? Here, here, here. Have some juice. <laughs> Water. This will calm you down. It's only me. They are just illusion. <laughs> Nobody here except me and you. <laughs> no need to be shy. See, you are, you're so brave. Look. Thousand people. You're the only one. <laughs> you. How much you want it? I know, I know. Nobody else wants it, uh, only you, so it's okay, forget them. You want a cushion behind there for your butt? <laughs> Never mind. It's all not real, actually, but it is real. Yeah. We make it real, so it's fun. Here, apple juice. Keep you calm. My God, I join you. Cheers. <laughs> Mother's Day. <laughs> what? Oh, really? I haven't even spoken anything. She said, I answer her everything. Have I said anything? I just come to three and I answer all her questions. My God. <laughs> and people think I don't have magical power. <laughs> Cheers. Hey. <laughs> Not yet, tomorrow, no? What day is today? Eleven? Not yet, tomorrow. <laughs> mm. Cheers. Illusion. <laughs> Illusion apple juice. <laughs> you know, it's true, huh? Even when I'm saying to you that it's illusion apple juice, it is like that. Mm. My God, it's so real, the illusion, huh? <laughs> Okay, so Thank now you. what is your story? I have a lot, a lot of experiences, Master. I had um, <sighs> so much um, pain and suffering, but at the same time so much has been revealed to me. Um, Thank you to the Lord. Um, yeah. I feel I'm not so worthy. Blessing, huh? So yeah. much blessing. Sometimes. So much pain, but yeah. yet there's no pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes suffering is a blessing in disguise. Yes. It's, it depends on how we look at it. Yeah. I, yeah. I've had um, an experience a little while back. Um, I think I've died and I've brought back. Um, I've had major operations, and uh, in the last couple of years. Um, I know what it feels like. I know yeah. you do. I know. I know what it feels like. Um, I have just um, helped a, a person actually. Um, he, he, uh, one of the person I knew, you know, he's a doctor. He's a vet actually. And uh, can I in can I interrupt yes, before I forget? And then you, you and then you have another story, and then I have another story. <laughs> um, in the last week, you know. Uh, he's a vet, and he has um, he has a pro prostate. You call it cancer? Yeah. With this is nasty. You know, they open all your pelvis, and it's a bad arrangement from I don't know who, but <laughs> that thing is very deep. You know, they open your pelvis and then uh, mess it all up. It's terrible, and some people don't come back. Is that right? Yeah, but this guy, he did come back though, he did come back. <laughs> he was so scared, His first time he, he was under knife, he's always on top of the knife before, you know. <laughs> he operated uh, also the, um, the animals, 
Yeah, but he never has been operated before, and he, he was very nervous. And actually, I, I don't know how, I was kind of uh, not very pleased with him before. He was one of my vet, but then something happened, you know. I guess he think I'm one of the girls. <laughs> So he can, uh, you know, kind of, <coughs> you know, what men like to do with women. <laughs> and I was very, uh, I'll say, displeased. So I don't want to see him anymore. I <laughs> went to another vet. But it happened that he has to see me again, you know. I don't know, somehow it happened. It's just like God wants it. Maybe he fears God, maybe he prayed, or I don't know. <laughs> He said he did. <laughs> anyway. anyway, he didn't know my intention, though, because it happened so quick. But he told me, because he told me he has this cancer and he has to go to operate and all that, so I feel sympathetic for him. And perhaps because of my sympathy, he feels like he can advance, you know, <laughs> something else. <laughs> yeah, men misunderstand so quickly. <laughs> but anyway, it was more than just a misunderstanding, you know, so I didn't like it too much, you know. It gone a little bit physical, <laughs> so I didn't like it. So I decided, yeah. Anyway, it's not much. It's just uh, you know, sometimes when the men try too hard, <laughs> you don't like it yeah, because uh, there's no need to to do anything physical, right? Love, even love, is in the heart, no. <laughs> anyway, he he's not bad looking. He's about forty something, you know, younger than me. He's not bad looking, and he has money and everything. But <laughs> it's not the point, you know. I mean, so anyway, I don't want to. But then we went uh, to a countryside and then saw a possum. You know what a possum? He looked like a big rat. Yeah, bigger, like about about twenty times bigger than a rat, and a long tail, like a small kangaroo even. And uh, they have uh, babies put it in their pouch, just like the kangaroo. Yeah, so maybe that's just a mini kangaroo. <laughs> anyway, actually, I saw it. I said, oh my God, uh, you know, I saw him bleeding. And then we turn around, and then one of my uh, assistants said, no, no, he was eating something in his mouth, <laughs> because his mouth was red. And when I saw it open, it's all red, you know. And I saw something wet on the floor too, but it's outspot, so you cannot see well it's red or not. He just uh, passing by quick. And my assistant said, no, no, he's okay. He was just eating something. Because, uh, up, because uh, he, but then uh, we passed by and then I saw, I'm not sure. Why is he eating something? And when we approached, he didn't even move, you know? But after we turn, ar he turn, we turn away, he moves, he tried to move up. So my assistant said, oh, he's alive, whatever it is, he's still alive, so he cannot be dead. First, you know, like he does a move. We open his mouth, and then he say he eats something. And then later I said, maybe he's dead. And then he said, no, he's alive, you know. He moved, he tried to move very hard, he tried to move his head. So I said, stop the car, we go and have a look. And then he was really wounded, very badly, you know. I don't know how bad it is. It looked like his jaw broken, and he, he bled a lot. So we wrap him up, you know, and then uh, try to. It was a her. <laughs> we knew it afterward, you know. Actually, I kind of knew it right away, but not like knowing physically, you know. I said, "My God, we have to take, uh, you know, this away because he might have a family also." And indeed, she she did have family in here, you know. Afterward, uh, the doctor told me, I said, "Maybe she's pregnant." Even I say that. I said, my God, look like she's pregnant. I didn't see any baby. I never know this kind of thing before. But somewhere I can see it for me. I said, oh, look like she, she's pregnant. <laughs> because I didn't know they put it in the pouch. You know, physically, I don't know. I don't know this kind um, you know, materially, I don't know that there's the baby in the pouch. But I see it with here. I say, look like she's pregnant. I hope she's not pregnant. So we went to, uh, there was some pastor by and he tried to help us with other hospital, but then it doesn't work. And I run to another hospital, which I knew, you know, emergency hospital. And they said, no, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't want this. Uh, they have rabbi, they bite and blah, 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 you'll be in trouble. No, no, we don't accept this. 
I said, but I'm, I have a lot, I, you know, I've been here before, I'm a patient here, you know, not a, my patient, but my, my pet, a patient. He said, no, no, we don't take, we don't take. Uh, the only thing we can do is put him to death, to sleep, you know, injection, and then he died. I said, no, no, you cannot do this. Uh, you have to know what, what's going on. You first, you know, if he's really unsavable, maybe you can put him to death, but you cannot just kill him like that. He said, no, that's the only thing we do, otherwise take him, take him somewhere else. I said, where else can I take him? I don't know anywhere else. I don't know the way here. He said, well, you take him to wildlife. Okay, so they got the number, da, 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 da. But it's very far away, you know, like an hour or more. I said, he would die when we got there. They told me it's he, 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 so I also say it's a he. <laughs> I said, he would die if we got there, it's too far. He said, no, that's it, otherwise we put him to death. And I so said, it's, it's not possible. So we call the, the wildlife, and they say, oh, sorry, you come tomorrow, we're closed now. I said, but we have emergency here. He said, well, sorry, we cannot do anything about it. I said, what kind of wildlife are you? You know, I mean, it's so supposed to be rescue wildlife, but they don't have any 24-hour service. I don't believe it. Oh, so I hate it so much, and I called the other vet, the vet that I have uh, changed to. And he said, no, no, I cannot take him tonight. He doesn't explain why. And uh, that's it, you know, I can't help him. I said, okay, so what do you want me to do? Put him to, to, to sleep? He said, take him to the hospital. <laughs> or take him home and feed him and see him how he do tomorrow. I say, no, he cannot. I cannot do that. He's suffering. You know, he's suffering so much. You know, he's hit by the car. How can you wait until tomorrow? He won't even eat. So he said, well, do whatever, you know. <laughs> so I, I also hate that guy. <laughs> Some am desperate. You know, I call this guy. You know, the guy, the guy that before I hate this guy, I hate that guy. <laughs> No, that's just human, that's just man. Actually, I don't hate any of them. But because of that, I had to call him. And he accepted him right away. He said, oh, okay, okay. Um, normally, they have two doctors, and I, I didn't think I would have seen him. I see the other one, but the other one also not there. So he's the one who answered the phone for emergency. It was 11 o'clock or something. So he said, well, um, bring him to my home, my house. And that's the first time I go there, and I was kind of touched, you know, because he's late and he accepts him and he even, uh, say, bring him to my house. And he was very concerned about me too. He said, please be very careful, you know, be very careful. He sounds better than the other one, more concerned, you know. Be very careful because they might bite you and they might carry uh, rabies, right? Rabies? Not rabbi, no? <laughs> okay. So please be careful. So I said, okay, okay, we wrap him up, and he seemed to be very, um, very uh, uh, injured, so he's not doing anything. We're watching while we're driving with the car. He said, bring to my house, because my wife's not home. He even had a wife. <laughs> that is the thing. That's why I got so mad too, you know what I mean? <laughs> if a bachelor handsome like you, maybe I forgive, but <laughs> he's married and messed up like that. So anyway, I'm just kidding. None, none of you. No, 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 no. Single or bachelor, nothing, not a nix. <laughs> no hope, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so we brought him to his house because he said his wife is not home and his son, he even had a son too. Can you imagine? You know why I'm mad, huh? I had the right, no? Eh? Okay. He so said his son is sleeping. He babysits, so he cannot go to the clinic which is nearby, to see me, and so we should bring him to his house. I said, do you have uh, equipment in your house? I mean, for emergency. He said, yeah, I have everything. Okay, so we brought him to his house, and then, uh, and then he put him in a cage. You know, he took a cage out, and he put him in a cage. I said, so I thought you were going to do something. He said, well, I have to wait until my wife got home. I said, my God, when will she get home? If she ever got home. <laughs> I, and also, he's suffering so much, so maybe we babysit for you, and you go to the clinic. So after, you know, considering, he picked one of my assistants, and then to babysit. 
Yeah, and then we rushed to the hospital nearby. And then he, he really took care of, of, of him, you know. I say, doctor, look like, oh, it's a she. They always told me it's a he, but it's a she. I, I think she's pregnant. I hope she's not pregnant. He knew she is, but he didn't tell me. He don't say nothing. And then it wrap her up again, you know, calm her down, it's a painkiller injection, and then uh, Anastasia, and then uh, all kind of thing, you know, about three, four shots he give. So she calmed down after a while, and then we clean her up, and then put her in the cage, you know, in the, in the clinic cage, you know, sterilized cage. And at least I feel better. And he say her skull is damaged, you know, uh, caved in, you know, crushed in. So he, he doesn't think that she's going to make it, but he, he try and all that, you know. I said, at least she's not suffering now. Yeah, at least she has a painkiller, nah? so she can afford to wait until tomorrow. And he give her some other shot, you know, antibiotic, you know, like whatever. So at least she's not like in pain and wait until tomorrow morning, you understand? In agony. So I was uh, feeling better. And in the morning, I call around 9 o'clock. That's uh, when the clinic opened. I didn't call. I was uh, in my bed still, you know. I was meditating. And suddenly the, the podium came. He said, good night, Mom. Yeah, because last night, you know, they wanted to put her to sleep. That means, you know. So now she's gone to sleep. At that time, exactly. She come and said to me, good night, Mom. <laughs> and then I, you know, you know, I showed up and I knew she's gone. I knew she's gone. So I called the clinic and she's gone. They don't know what time she's gone. She said when they arrived, she kind of gone already. But she managed to stay alive despite all this. You know, half of her skull is sunk in, you know, broke in. But she, she was alive. She walks around and she tried to stand up and all that. Because when I call the doctor, he say, is she stand, is she walking, is she moving? I say, no, she just, um, she stand up sometime. Then she start moving right away. You know, as if she hurt me, so that we can save her. And later, um, she died, but the baby is alive. One of the baby died, but four uh, survived. And later, some of the person uh, from another city adopted them. You know, and that's how, you know, that's how this guy <laughs> got into back into my connection again, and then because he's going to have an operation and he was very nervous and scared, so we took care of him. I sent a vegetarian food. Uh, no, in the car, you know, during the the drive from my from his house to the clinic, he kept telling me that uh, the doctor, because he knew I'm vegetarian, so he say uh, somehow like the doctor advised him not to eat too much uh, red meat. I say, I'm trying to be vegetarian now, I eat, but I still eat chicken because um, I don't know what else to do, you know. So I say, oh, we are vegetarian, we can cook for you, you know, uh, until you recover. And I told him uh, that, uh, I told him uh, something that I shouldn't. <laughs> I say, I had a vision that uh, I should have told you, but I didn't want to. But since you already told me that you are vegetarian, I'm going to tell you now. Uh, I say, if uh, in six months, within six months, if you don't eat vegetarian, after operation, you will die. So you can believe me or not believe me, I have no reason to tell you a lie, you know. So I say, yeah, yeah, I believe you, I believe you, but, uh, you know, I don't know how to eat vegetarian, a little bit here and there. I say, well, we can help you. You know, at least when you're in the hospital, we cook and bring it there. So we bring it to his house, and then when he goes to the hospital, we bring three three times a day when he can eat. Before that, uh, we bring juice, you know, and liquid soup, clear soup and all that. But then he eat the chickens in the hospital and the eggs. My attendant saw it. They didn't want to cook for him anymore. I also didn't. But then afterward, uh, anyway, his wife doesn't like it too much that we take care of him because she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't cook for him ever. Mm -hmm. She's also vegetarian, you know, raw food. 
So, uh, but afterward, he, 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 call, he keep calling, calling, you know, because um, we don't cook anymore. Cause his wife, they don't, don't eat, so he has to eat whatever she <laughs> prepare. It's also not bad, you know, raw foods is not bad. Just that he told me he cannot face salad and sprout every day, you know, <laughs> and raw tofu. <laughs> and his wife say something funny, like, I cannot eat, I cannot eat soy. Is there any soy in there? Don't cook any soy for me. I said, we cook for the patient, not for you, really. <laughs> you don't have to eat it. I don't eat soy, you know. I just eat raw tofu every day, a lot. But I don't eat soy. Don't cook any soy. <laughs> I was just laughing inside, you know. <laughs> I don't say anything. But the doctor said, oh my God, don't you know soy is, uh, tofu is made of soy? <laughs> but we pretend we didn't hear anything. <laughs> Uh, for example, like that, you know, some some people are very funny. <laughs> so we had a good laugh for a few days, you know. Huh? Yeah, he better. He called me. He said he's okay. He can take care of himself. I said, yeah, I hope so. he still cannot, you know, get up. You know, if he laid out, it's okay because it's internal. It's painful. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, it will last for a while. You know, it's not immediately like that. And then he said to me, uh, he thanked me and all everything that the thing we did for for him and nobody has ever done so much. And I said, oh no, it's okay, we we do that if necessary. You know, it's just love thy neighbor stuff. You know, but some people think it's strange. You know, because everybody read the Bible, love thy neighbor, but when we act <laughs> out of the Bible, they 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 feel like scared or strange, like we want something from them, like his wife, for example. You know. Because people just don't act out what they study, you know, what their religion tells them. So when somebody else really acts out, they, they feel very uh, suspicious, you know. What kind of people is this? What does he want? Yeah, I had problems with, with my neighbor also. <laughs> this is a, another long story. I don't want to bore you. <laughs> Maybe another time I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I got into trouble all the time <laughs> because of this love thy neighbor stuff, you know. <laughs> I love all my neighbor. Huh? <laughs> 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 ah, yeah, yeah, they're scared, they're scared, they're scared. All about give with the right hand and don't let your left hand know. But when you do that, your neighbor scared. Yeah, they read every day, love their neighbor, they're all Christian, you know? But when I really love them, they don't understand. <laughs> yeah, they don't understand, they're scared, and, you know? They got you into trouble sometimes because you love them. They don't understand this happening. They don't understand well, well, why, because they don't do it. Yeah, so I got into trouble with, uh, you know, neighbors all the time. <laughs> I mean, uh, anywhere I go. <laughs> Up to now, huh? In the future, maybe no. I learned my lesson. Love thy neighbor in the heart only. <laughs> Don't carry out into action. <laughs> yeah. So then they're not you're so scared. Yeah. Well, 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 where were we? Oh, yeah. And he called. He thanked me and all that. And he said, Wow, I really, you really changed my life. You changed the way I eat now, because I'll, uh, when I was in the hospital. Uh, your soup and your juice are very good. I pick all the items out for him, you know? Which one good? It's dynamite, you know, to boost his system. It's about 20 or 20 or 30 ingredients inside a uh, juice. You know, we make it fresh and with prayer and love and, <laughs> you know, Buddha's name and everything. So, of course, he feels different. Everybody thinks, my God, the second day he's all pink and like a healthy person. After a major operation, but he looked pink and normal, you know, very red and healthy, healthy, and he can walk already, you know. <laughs> so everybody says he's good. But then he eat the, the, the chicken and the egg, and then he told me, confessed me to me after. I said, he said he loved the vegetarian food that we prepare and all that. I said, but you eat the chicken and the egg, don't you? Didn't you? He said, yeah, I eat only once and I feel so sick. <laughs> if I keep eating, that's why the next day, when next day when the hospital food came, I pushed it aside and I eat your food. If I keep eating hospital food, I probably still stay in the hospital. Yeah, because he felt sick afterward. I didn't want to say that. I told you so. You know, ah, let it be. You know, I said, ah, that's good, good. Then you keep keep vegetarian. You know, as much as possible and be vegetarian is not. Um, 
it's it's no big deal, you know. It's it's not that difficult uh, because um, uh, what we eat to live. I tell him we eat to live, you know. Uh, and he said, "Wow, you are so good, so good, and all that." And I keep telling him all this Bible stuff, you know, love thy neighbor, There's no problem, and you should thank God. I'm just a humble instrument. I'm nobody. I'm not doing nothing big deal. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I told him to pray to God more. You know, he said he does. He, he does every day. He said, uh, today let me do your will every day. He say like that. I said, okay, then maybe you deserve it. Maybe you deserve our help. So it's normal. We should help each other. He said, well, okay, because I help your animal, so you help me, right? I said, I would help you even without you helping my animal. I don't really need him. There's so many vets. Of course, he's very famous. He's good, good. He's good, though. He's the best. But still, it doesn't need to. You know, my birds are right. <laughs> they don't really. My pets are right. They don't really need the best. You know, just check up. It just uh, like last time I told you about my poodle. He's not a poodle. He's a bichon. Yeah. Now that the doctor, you no, know, the 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 hairdresser, the groomer, tell me that he's pure bichon. Yeah, I have suspicion about his origin. <laughs> he's a bichon because he has emergency. Though all his teeth were rotten. You know and the infection spread through all his body. So we had to find the best for him. Otherwise, after that, there's no, no need, you know. Normally, just uh, any vet will do. So we don't, I don't really need him. We just started with him, that's all. But because people recommend, he's he good, he's good. But there are many, and he's good too. Maybe not famous, but good. He's just famous. <laughs> Uh, so I don't really need him, you know. It just we do it because he needs it, you know. I thought he needs it. The way he he talk, he beg like he has no love and no nobody take care of him. He's married, all right, but they're not very. Yeah. After I met his wife, I understand. He's so deprived, you know, deprived. So so lacking in his life. Yeah. I rather marry Stone. <laughs> in that case. So cold, some, some woman can be so cold, so turn off, huh? So kind of emotionless, you know, expressionless, emotionless or loveless. Well, they both need it. <laughs> so I told him, you have to love your wife more. Yeah, maybe she needs more love from you. That's what I told him. And vice versa, I guess. Maybe they deserve each other. <laughs> But uh, you know, we, some people. I tell you, it's not like only the homeless people, or the single people, or the people who don't have merit that need need care, or the old people. Sometimes people really need love within the marriage. They marry, but they don't have love. Huh? I feel that as well, Master. I feel. That we really fear, fear love, pure love. It's there. We we've got it, but we can't. Sh you fear it. Very hard to share it because oh. it's overpowering. Oh. It's overwhelming to really. Oh. My oh. love for you, I don't fear at all. It's different. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like that with uh, with some of the well, marriage people. When we really love, maybe our partners, we fear maybe the loss, but yet we shouldn't. But it's still, I don't know. It's I can't <laughs> explain it. I can't uh, explain me neither. <laughs> It's something you have to feel. Um, yeah, sometimes, I don't know. No, if you cannot express, it's okay, but some, some people are so stone cold, you know what I mean? Very cold, very rejecting, very, uh, I don't know, so cold, just so cold, ice cold, loveless feeling. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe so, yeah. But uh, the human being, they need more than just uh, inside, you know? So he he's not the same, you know. So anyway, so sometimes people have married, have wife, have kids, but and have business, have employees, have friends. But when he's sick, nobody's there. Of course, they come after the second day, you know, with flour and chocolate, and that's it. But they nobody is there when he needs a helping hand to walk to the bathroom. You know, when the nurse is too busy, when he's lonely at night, he said it was a very f frightening and, and lonely experience for him. I know all that, I can feel that. 
That's why I wanted to help him, even though it looks like he has family and friends and everybody, but it's not, it's not like people there to help him. People don't know how to handle it. Yeah, when, they don't when, know. They because don't know. I experienced this also when I was in hospital. Um, my family came, but they were helpless. Yeah, they, they don't know. They didn't know what to do. They, yeah, they yeah. just sat there and It's true, me. it's true, it's true. And I would rather they weren't there because it's true. they couldn't handle it at all. Yeah, yeah, it's true too. Yeah. But I, I would know how what to do. I just I can sometimes feel what the the person feel. I know what they need and what they want at what moment. So I, I sent some of our assistants there, you know, to stand by for him. And he was very, very grateful because, you know, sometimes the nurse is so too busy and he need to you know, go to the bathroom or something, or he walk a little bit, or he has pain here and there, because he's full of tubes everywhere. You know, it's not easy to to for him to uh, to do things, and nobody's there when he needs to brush teeth and all that. Nobody take care. Just some small things like that, or he want to drink some water. He couldn't move. Thing like that. So I understand all this, but his family doesn't seem to. His friends is not there. The sister came and then, but she left. You know, just so it's not like. And they're busy too. You know, they have to go home to their family and and business and all that. So um, so I just left some of the my you know our people there to take care of him. But I understand what he needs, and he was very grateful about that. But I told him just uh, you know thank God. <laughs> Okay, that's it. You continue with your story. Maybe I have another story after your story. <laughs> I'm just sitting here and thinking how much I feel what you feel and you feel what I feel. That's why I'm sitting here. Because I have to tell people how special you are. Oh, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do understand people's feeling. Yeah. In, in, when they really need it, I know it. But when they pretend to need it, that's, that's when I don't like very much. You know, like a craving for attention, just for nothing. Yeah. yeah. And that's the way, that's the oneness that I can't explain, but that is being one with the highest, and that is... Being one with you. Being one with you as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 And that is what it's all about. Yes, yes. We, we, can, we can be like that if we concentrate. Mm. Yes. And the love. method we practice is so special. Yeah, it it's is. It's very special, and I want everyone to cherish it. I do they do, don't I they? I hope they do. <laughs> you better cherish it, huh? Do you? Yeah. Yeah, because they... yeah, all our needs, everything is answered. I, I, I know that I shouldn't be probably be here. I would be dead. <laughs> um, I know the earth wow. is... I feel well, I went through so much that I came to the earth and I knew it was a negative place, but I couldn't understand why it was negative. And I knew that it was killing me. It was. It, it was killing me off, and then I discovered the Kuan Yin, and it was pulling me up, but yes, the earth was yes. pulling me down. Yes. And there was a constant battle with negative and positive, I felt, but I experienced all this, and I think the good is winning. Yes, the good is winning. It has to win. It has to win, <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm so, ah. so grateful for all the blessings and everything that's been shown to me. Um, yeah, you're good. You're happy, huh? Very. That's cool. Very. Yeah, that's all you. what I want. That's. Mm. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. And we have a reason for doing it, and the method works. It just yeah, works it works. So much. <laughs> it works all right. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. But it's scary for some other people. It's scary, huh? exactly. Yeah. My husband's fearful of it, I mm. think. I know he's scared. Yeah. Um, it's funny how people can be scared of love, you know that? They feel it from you, and they're so, it's so powerful. They, <laughs> they're scared of you. And all the while, they, they have been taught to have unconditional love, you know, and all that. And they want unconditional love, but when they get it, they don't understand. They're so confused and scared. Mm, it's okay, just the brain, just the mind. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Well, if you don't have anything to say, I'll tell you the, my neighbor's story. Yeah? You love gossip, huh? <laughs> okay. No, it's because uh, when the doctor say, "Oh, you know, my wife is because she call and tell us, don't call, don't bring food, don't come," <laughs> so we don't. And then uh, he have to call. He keep calling, calling, but I was never there to answer. 
finally I answer. So, and my assistant already answered, tell him that uh, your wife told us not to come, so we stop. Uh, not that we don't want to, huh? So he, he said to me, oh yeah, my wife, she's very protective of, uh, of uh, her property here, you know. <laughs> of her, of her, um, not the property, what's the word of it? Territory, yeah. <laughs> She's very protective of her territory here. <laughs> and I was thinking, yeah, yeah, I know very well. My dogs do it, my birds do it. <laughs> they even mark the territory, you know. <laughs> they mark all over my house. <laughs> and I have to spray them with water and, and clean it up. <clears throat> uh, and then I say, don't worry, don't worry. You know, I understand, I understand. I say, it's just my problem. I got into trouble myself, you know, <laughs> also with my neighbors, you know. Uh, two times we live near, we move, and then one time with a neighbor. It was like this, the first neighbors in the old place is like this. Uh, normally I, I, don't, uh, I don't involve with neighbors. If they say hello, I say hello, you know, that's it and maybe Christmas or something, we bring present and that's it. You know, if they need something, they come. If not, it's okay. And this neighbor, normally we also like that. But then one day, uh, the, the, the woman has a birthday, and she came out even tell us about it. <laughs> so, of course, I bring some present over there. And by the way, she got a present from her boyfriend, you know, the owner of the house. She's not the owner of the house. Uh, it's a dog, you know, a Laza Apso, but that big. <laughs> it's about 10 pounds the most, yeah? uh, They belong to lap dog category. And he was so cute, you know, of course I love her very much. And sometimes if uh, they're not there, they let me take care of the dog. Oh, okay. And then one day the dog was bitten by three Dalmatian. You know Dalmatian, the spotted one in the 101 Dalmatian? Yeah, big, massive, big, big, about, oh, 10 times bigger than her, I guess, huh? But three of them attacked this little dog, because their, their house don't have fence. And then the three dogs just got loose by accident or something. Normally, they kept them in the house, but that day, probably, they run too fast. And they run to their, their house and beat the small dog. Probably they think it's a toy. So, and then uh, they saw him, and they brought the dog inside and put it on the sofa or something. And I also don't know. And then she came over, tell my assistant that her dog was bitten by three Dalmatian, and she needs comfort. So please tell me, <laughs> come over, comfort the dog. Yeah. Because, you know, I love that dog, yeah? And I love dogs, I love animals. So, okay, I come running. I came running, I saw the dog laying there, you know, shaking, shaking. And I was in tears, I said, I'm sorry. Sorry I wasn't there to protect you, I'm very sorry. And I saw her shaking, shaking, I said, my God, you know, we have, we have to take her to the hospital. She said, no, no, she's all right, she's all right, you know, it's okay now. I said, no, she's not okay. Suppose you've been attacked by three elephants. That's well. That's the combination. That's the comparison. You know, our size and elephant and her size to the dimension. Suppose you are attacked by three elephants, you wouldn't be okay, no? We better check. You know, even if she's okay, eh, it's better we take it to the the doctor and check it out. He said, No, it's a Saturday. I don't think uh, my my vet uh, is open. I think it's closed. I said, I don't care. I was at that time. I met. I said, I don't care, there must be an emergency somewhere, and you should know it. So anyway, we got to her vet, and it's open. <laughs> she called the vet, and it's open, and we brought her there. And uh, I paid, of course. You know, I always do that. If I have a chance, I pay. And it was convenient. Later, I found out, you know, through the father of the husband, you know, boyfriend, that um, he never let her use a credit card or money or cell phone because she spent too much. So he, she suspended, so she didn't have money. So it was convenient that I pay anyway. She didn't mention anything. She said, I don't have to. I said, hey, it's okay, just like my dog. You know, we're neighbors. You know, I love the dog. It's okay. It's not much. 
Well, it's about two hundred dollars. One hundred seventy-five, but I give tips, so <laughs> it becomes two hundred. Because I was so grateful, you know. So I left the rest, and we brought chocolate and everything later to the whole staff, and the doctors, and that was okay. And uh, it wasn't okay because the dog, when we brought her in the car, she was bleeding at that time. Then I saw bleeding. My God, if we didn't bring her, she would die already. And the doctor had to shave her and make many stitches. And they say she was okay. <laughs> she say, uh, I cannot touch her because if I touch her, she cry. I said, that's, that's the reason she should go to the doctor. She cry. When you touch her, that means she's wounded somewhere. Maybe inside, you don't see it. But she was even outside, you know, it was bleeding. And I only discovered it in the car, I saw. And then later the doctor saw, you know, uh, make surgery and then make stitches and then she's okay after a while. But I, and then, but they don't care. They took their friends, everybody go out and leave the dog alone at home, you know. <laughs> so I went there and sit and babysit for the dog and they didn't, they didn't really like it very much, you know, like I invade their home or something, but I couldn't care less. I normally don't do it because I, I don't like to go to anybody's house. Even you invite me. <laughs> Very difficult that I go there. But because of the dog, I love the dog. You know, he, he, she loves me so much. Sometimes when she sees me, she comes to me and she doesn't want to go home. And I feel embarrassed for them, you know. If she's with me and her mother calls, you know, the, the owner calls, she don't come. <laughs> she just stay around me, you know, hang around and cling, you know, pretend to do something else. So I feel embarrassed for them. Maybe that's why they also don't like, yeah? Well, and the dog hasn't been with me that long, just a few times, and she's very attached already to me. But what can I do with a neighbor's dog, you know? I have no intention to, to steal him or anything. I just love the dog, and he, she loves me by, just by nature, you know? So anyway, that's just one thing. And uh, probably I pay, you know, they like it very much. And they keep telling me, all oh, the other, the owner of the three dimensions, we pay you. We pay you, but they never pay. <laughs> I say, no, no, it's okay. But they wouldn't say, I will pay, we will pay you back. They say, the owner of the three dimensions, they have to, well, they will pay you. <laughs> we call the police already, they will pay you. But then I never see them. Uh, you know what I mean? So they, they like it, but they don't like it too, you know, because, um, and then I bought a, a lot of toys for the dogs and a big cage for him because they bought so small cage, the carrier cage, you know, which you can use only temporary, but not to sleep every night because she grow bigger, bigger, bigger. So I bought a cage and I put dog bed and everything and toys and and they like it, but they don't like it. You know what I mean? They like it because it's free gift. They don't like it because um, he feel bad because he's uh, not generous to his wife and I, I look too generous without knowing. I did not think, but I, I found out afterward, you know? That's one thing, and they already don't feel too good. I didn't know. Uh, uh, I, okay, but I also don't really like to involve too much, you know what I mean? Or go to their house too much. I don't like, what for, you know? Just to pick up the karma? <laughs> My goodness. But because we neighbor, you know? So of course, uh, it's Christmas and it's a New Year, so I brought some food there and, and present and all that. And then uh, around New Year, uh, Christmas and New Year, their friends come. They always have friends and sometimes uh, music loud all night, you know. And then the friend come and one of the friends have a cold or something, have a stiff neck, you know, couldn't move and all that. And I also didn't know. And then they come running to my house because they saw the way I treat the dog. So they come running to my house. Oh, I have this, that, do you have this? You have this for me, you have that. I say, oh, what happened? Oh, I can't move my neck, that's so painful and all that. Of course I'm running, you know? And I send my assistant to massage and warm up, warm packet, electric blanket, everything, and make the bed for her, and, and, and I, I help her to make it warm and everything. And all the friends also say, I also have stiff necks. <laughs> That, that was a woman, you know, I took care of her, okay, but the man also come and I had suspicion, you know. I said, okay, okay, you, you stay there, I do it later. Because I saw he has a girlfriend, you know. I, I know what girlfriend I like. I don't want to be in trouble. I said, okay, you stay there, I finish her first and you come later. But I have my suspicion that he just made it up. Because he saw me massage her and take care of her lovingly, so I think he wants to share. And meanwhile, the girlfriend already looking at me, you know. So I said, okay, so stay there. And later I give her things, you know, I bought her some pullover, 
because I saw her always wear the thin one, you know. And she told me she doesn't have much money and all that, you know. But the neighbors have money, but not her, you know. She's a friend of the friend, no, girlfriend of their friend. And they don't, don't like her because they told me later that she steals some whiskey and all that stuff from them. What means steal whiskey? If you invite a friend come, you should let them drink what you have. huh? <laughs> whiskey or no whiskey, huh? But anyway, I don't care about that. That's what they told me later. I said, oh, it's okay if you invite them here, you know? Mm. And they don't like her. So when I take care of her, they also hate me. You know, they hate her, and then I take care of the enemy, you know? I became collective karma enemy. <laughs> so I don't like it already. So when I brought the, the pullover for her, they took it from her and put it somewhere else and tell her that it's only borrow. Don't let her wear it even. Even if, it's, even if I lend it to her, I should let her wear it, no? I bought just uh, like five or six pullover, different size, or different style for her. And it also New Year, you know? Christmas, you give present, it's normal. Huh? But they put it away and then uh, forced me to take it back home. I said, it's not much here. And I even buy for everybody too. I said, I buy it also for everybody for my uh, driver, my assistant too, and this is just by the way, and she needs it. No, if you don't take it home, you cannot talk to me again. I said, right, okay. I said, why is that? Uh, I don't have time to buy a present for you to thank you right now, and all that. I said, my God, I don't even think about that. But, uh, but he was so harsh, you know. Because I, I guess he hated me long already for many things. <laughs> for being good to his dogs and his wife and his father, <laughs> you know, bringing food to his father because he wanted to eat Chinese food and nobody buy it for him. So I bring, you know, I said, oh, we have a lot, you know. If I cook, sometimes I bring over, because we couldn't eat all this anyway, so we share, you know, oh, come over, eat with us. So he hates me for doing many bad things, you know. <laughs> I pay for the dog, take the dog to the hospital. When he say no, he say no problem. He has no problem. But when she came home, it's all shaved and, you know, and stitches. So, like, I show him up. You know what I mean? Like, I make him look bad. But I did not mean to. Honestly, you know that, huh? You wouldn't mean you just love the dog and you concentrate and you worry about the dog and you just want to get him out of danger. You would not think to, to, to make the owner feel bad or anything. And I'm, I'm generous, you know, I mean, with anybody, I mean, not just them, but because I don't know that. They think I want something. I don't even want to thank you for me. I thank them for letting me take care of the dog. I did. I said, thank you. Yeah, that's very gracious of you that to trust me even to let me take care of the dog. You know, because I feel already that they, they, they think I'm interfering, you know, but I was just happy to take care because if I didn't take care, that dog would die, you know. And... And it was feel like my dog as well. I love that dog too. <laughs> so, so because of many bad things I did, you know, like take care of the dog, pay for his wife, and give give to his wife, give present to his friends, and treat his father well, and <laughs> treat other friends well, and all that. So he hated me. <laughs> so that day he really, oh, pouring air from nowhere, from nothing. He just keep pouring out everything. So I just went home. <laughs> So that's how I got into trouble. And that's one neighbor. And then we moved to another place. It's other neighbors. You know, it's uh, because we came and it's a new place, so we have to renovate and sometimes make noise and all that. So we came and gave them some present, you know, <laughs> say, sorry if we inconvenient you some way. And because of that, you know, they think we want something from them and begin to, you know, all kind of things. Or want some more present, I don't know. Every time we make a little noise, they call police and call this, call that, call the owner of the house. <laughs> and then if my bird make a quack, he, he say he call police. I say, you call police many times already and nothing happened. <laughs> this is my house, you know, where else should I go? Oh, you cannot do this, it's so near to my uh, house, <laughs> it's so noisy. I said, I'm sorry if it, it convenient you, but you call so many people, or you call police, you call the surveyors company, you call the uh, government, and you call your, your landlord, uh, why don't you call the president? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, 
and uh, so so that you call everybody already, you know, and he keep on and on and on and on, you know. Ah, oh, came pouting on us. But they both apologized later, can you imagine? For what? <laughs> it's But it's not the same again, you know, even though they feel bad afterward and they apologize, but we don't feel the same anymore. Eh? We don't feel the same because whatever they said, it cannot be erased just like that. The way they said it, you know, and the attitude and everything. It's not the same. So we are kind of very uh, careful with neighbor, you know. <laughs> so now we just uh, close the gate and hello, <laughs> hello, Christmas bring present and run, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and something like that. It's and sometimes if they forget the keys and locked out, you know. And we came and opened the door for them tr- because, you know, <laughs> climb in the window for them and open the door for them because <laughs> they're too big to climb in. We're smaller. <laughs> for example, thing like that. You know, then we do it. But then we run back quickly, you know. No more, no more too much friendship. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. They're so fearful of love. And... Uh, I was thinking they should they should feel happy because uh, many of you want me to even go there one second I don't even go, huh? Maybe it's my karma because I keep refusing all of you and you curse me or something. <laughs> yeah, but you so many. I, if I go to this house, that house be jealous. I can be going forever, you know. <laughs> but it's neighbors, you know. What can I do, huh? I gotta help the neighbor. That's normal. But because nobody do that before, so they're scared, no? And they even told me, you know, oh, the American neighbors are so funny. That guy, huh? The, the one next to next to him, you know, on his left side, I'm on right side. Uh, that one, huh? Whenever I say hello to him, he just turn his butt. <laughs> and afterward, you know, they have trouble with me like that. I was thinking, yeah, no wonder. <laughs> The only good neighbor, <laughs> you 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 shoo away, you know, you make trouble. So how how can any neighbor be good to you? Yeah, I'm also not trying to be that good anymore. I used to be more friendly, you know, sharing food and all that, you know. But uh, now it's okay. We keep our food. <laughs> we don't share. It's better that way. Because they will feel like they, 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 we want something from them, and they feel that they should do something, and if they don't do it, because they, they don't want to spend money, you know? So if they don't do it, they feel bad. And if they do it, they don't want to. <laughs> so it's just uh, not good for them, you know? It's better. After I know, I didn't know this. I didn't know, because we do think we don't. We don't think this way, you know? We are like uh, aliens <laughs> on this planet. We do things completely different from, from the people in this world. So they just don't understand. And so we better just, uh, you know, love from distance. <laughs> yeah. But of course, if they need something, you know, any time, I always help. But not like, uh, not too much, huh? Yeah. Only if they ask. Even if they ask, you have to be careful. Just uh, <laughs> have quickly and run, huh? <laughs> and that's why the world is the way it is. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, yeah, it's all this love instead of wars. And I know. And that's why it's going wrong. All, all this uh, love thy neighbor and old tradition stuff is so, sh- so um, how say estra- estranged now. You know, nobody do that anymore. It's, we so concentrate on material gain and profit and. We forget to live, you know, as a human, as a big family. Yeah. It's really funny. It is really funny. Yeah. Even my birds and dogs, they learn to share, you know. Beginning, you know, they don't know each other. They might, you know, grumble a little, but now they share, they don't care. Yeah, they share. The birds and all that, they live together. You know, most of them in harmony, except one, you know, if, if the adopted one, for example, he came from bad background, you know, he come, he still carry it with him, so sometimes he shoo everybody away, and that's their house. He's an adopted one. 
And he come in and he feel that's it, you know, everybody off here, you know, it's all food are mine, all the perches are mine, all the cages are mine, you know, <laughs> the master are mine, <laughs> and things like that. But they slowly also learn and to live with each other and to share all the things they have. But we human take longer time. <laughs> I think it takes longer time, maybe year 3000. Yeah, if you live that long, huh, just continue living so you can see that my prophet, prophecy came true. <laughs> okay, so you know now, huh? Yeah. How about you? You have any good experience with the neighbors? Can you tell me some? Same, same? Yeah. It can't be that bad, is it? Hmm? Place of work where we, you know, people, instead of loving and getting on with each other, mm. they go the opposite direction and mm. it's very frustrating. And yeah. I thought it was me at first and then I thought, I've got no problem. It's, you uh, know, they... No, no, we don't have I share anything. everything. And, I know. I but they were so uh, territorial, like you were saying. Yeah, territorial, very, yes, very, yes, they, true. You know, they didn't like a newcomer and yeah. make you feel unwelcome. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Actually, like... In the case of the vet, we just intended to help him out when he couldn't move around easily and he couldn't cook or he couldn't go to the shop, buy it for himself, just for one or two weeks, you know, we... <laughs> my God, even she paved all the... Afterward, even she paved all the go on the, on the road to, to beg me to come, I wouldn't come. I don't have time. It was a sacrifice, you know, on my part uh, to take care of him. Sacrifice my personnel, my staff. I needed all of them, you know. But uh, we sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's not like I really enthusiastic or ambitious to do that. No, no. It's it's a uh, it's a it's an action of love, you know. It was a sacrifice on my part, you know, physically speaking, you know, my time and my staff, my energy, my money, also without taking any penny in return. You understand? And they, they've been together for 10 years already. You know, what they say, need privacy. What privacy do they need when he's in that condition? You think they can make love or something? <laughs> My God, <laughs> we need privacy at home. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> yeah, so just a lame excuse, you know what I mean? So. And we don't intend to go on there forever, my goodness. You know what I mean, huh? You don't, don't need to go, oh my God, I don't have time to, 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 to go visit people all the time. Um, many people invite me, sometimes a neighbor or some friend, but I often refuse. What far do I go there? I know, unless if I go to your house, it would be more sense, you know? Like we talk about spiritual thing, or you ask me a question, and we eat vegetarian, and we talk about God. We have the same common topic to talk about. If I go to their house, what do I do? Huh? Play football with their son, and huh? pet their duck, and that's it? Yeah. You know, and I can't eat what they eat, you know? Thing like that. So it's not much. It's not much if I go somewhere. So I don't go somewhere. <laughs> Unless that person is really good or asks about spiritual thing, then maybe I spend a little time with them. They don't know. They don't know that I don't even need to do that. It was really a sacrifice of love. Yeah, that's all. It's just completely for him. Because he was so fearful to die. And I know he would die if he, he eat meat. The operation will go well, and he will look good afterward. He will like continue living, but he die if he don't eat vegetarian, or at least a lot of vegetarian. You know, yeah. I mean, partially, but a lot partially. So, so I told him, <laughs> but he was very fearful though before that. You know, he was always shaky. Very, he told me it was very frightening. So it just. Uh, to help some person in need, you know. In need doesn't mean you know, it is a homeless or in need. Sometimes emotional need also is a in need person, yeah? Like you give them fearlessness, you give them comfort. That is also, also charity, yeah? Also love, also compassion. Yeah? Giving is not always money, yeah? yeah. So there are a lot of people who are in need in this world, you know. 
Yeah, so if you see a friend or neighbor, they're in distress or something, they're also in need, eh? Not necessarily that they are poor. Yeah. But also be careful. <laughs> I was very humble and still I got in trouble. <laughs> so be very careful. <laughs> it's not like you have love and compassion and you conquer everybody. It's not like that. They're so fearful of love. I have discovered, yeah. Fearful of generosity, fearful of unconditional love. So fearful, because they don't have this before. They don't know what it is. Yeah? Just like sometimes you, animals, huh? Uh, they're wounded and all that. You come to want to help them, but they're so scared of human, you know, they run away from you. They don't let you help. It's like that. It's like that. But sometimes when I feel so blessed and I'm in bliss, I fear that also. I don't want to. I, I, I'm frightened to enjoy it because it's... Frightened to enjoy sometimes, it? Sometimes, yeah, yeah, because it's... I can't believe it's happening to me, <laughs> and it's it's uh, silly, I know. But yeah, I know. You get used to it. Yes. Yeah, you get yeah. used to it. Take some time. Mm. Yeah, because too good. You know, we haven't we haven't had it for a long That's time. That's right. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, uh, because we know this. Uh, we don't hate people. See, we forgive everyone easily. We are also silly like this. <laughs> yeah, even fear God, of, uh, love of God. No? Yeah. Yeah, but we're okay, I think. We're all right. <laughs> okay, he let you guys have a rest, huh? Go back to sleep again or something. i see you later. I haven't slept the whole night, no? Yeah. I want to go home to sleep, because if I sleep here, you think, oh, if Master sleep, we can sleep. <laughs> Make a bad example. <laughs> i see you in a while, eh? After breakfast or something, yeah? Yeah, I come back and meditate with you. Like, don't have to meditate a lot. <laughs> Can see Master a lot. <laughs> Eat a lot. <laughs> and all become fabulous looking. <laughs> yeah. It's Mother's Day, you know. We women can eat and sing and make merry. <laughs> Do we have Father's Day as well? I never heard of it. Is that one? <laughs> what do they do on Father's Day? Do they celebrate? Never heard of it either. Ah, poor man. <laughs> Who say men rule the world? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they love to have political position and all that, and we enjoy all the goodies. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> we go shopping. <laughs> We do our nails, <laughs> we make our hair, <laughs> new SM clothes, <laughs> walk around with dogs, <laughs> yeah, eat ice cream with dogs, you know, <laughs> yeah, petting bird, you know, teaching bird all the tricks, and men go working like mad, you know. <laughs> and okay, 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 we give you a day, Father's Day, but who cares? We don't remember when. <laughs> It's only a name. <laughs> huh? But seriously, do we have one? Okay, what do you do for your fathers or a uh, husband? You, um, it's in June, and you buy your father a gift. Usually, poor father gets socks or ties, something that he doesn't ever wear. <laughs> the usual or, stuff. Or knees, and you usually t take him out to dinner, but sometimes he doesn't get taken out to dinner as much as we. Uh, to a nice place like we do on Mother's Day. Mother's Day, we really make sure mom gets a whole lot of things. But father, yeah, father, father. Flowers you know they, and all that. Yeah, we, we give them something, but it's not as something. big as Mother's Day. That's symbolic, you know. I mean, the thought is that count, right? 
<laughs> we already give him a Father's Day. What else does he want? <laughs> he has a day, you know what I mean? How many days can we have per year? Huh? Only had 365 days some. And then we have President's Day and All Saints Day and Single Saints Day and Married Saints Day and, you know, all kind of Saints Day. So how many days left? You know, and then school holiday, bank holiday and bankrupt holiday and all kind of days. So he has one day already, right? What else does the man want? I mean, socks. Who wants socks? <laughs> Poor man. <laughs> My God, <laughs> thank God we have one day the other way. He go without socks. <laughs> oh my God, we don't really treat men so good in this world. Huh? I treat my dogs better than that. <laughs> uh, they don't have to wait for dogs' day to have socks. <laughs> they don't need any. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> socks, my God. Father's Day, you buy him socks? It really sucks. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, and tithe, for example, huh? <laughs> Christmas he has tithe. <laughs> New, New Year he has tithe. Father Day has socks and tie again. You know, <laughs> my God. I mean, what? You cannot buy much for men, huh? Really? Yeah. I don't really kind of. I don't give present, but I think I give love for like Father Day and Mother Day. Oh, that's good, good, good. Once a year at least, hey? <laughs> <laughs> it lasts long, it lasts 365 days. Okay, that's a good idea. But it's better still if you love them every day. Like every day is special. Come home, hug them, say, oh, I love you, I miss you. But it have to be from the heart, huh? Yeah. Well, maybe on Father's Day we have more heart. <laughs> A poor father. <laughs> this year he has promotion and we took him all. <laughs> the money. <laughs> yeah. So what do the fathers do every day, mostly? Go to work, huh? Yeah, wear the same old shirt and the sock you buy last year. <laughs> yeah. My God, what do you buy for men when it's on holiday? I mean, Christmas or something day? Socks, ties, shirts, right? Belts. Harley, huh? Socks, mostly socks. <laughs> it's okay? You like socks? <laughs> no choice? <laughs> My God, poor man. You don't buy them perfume or anything like that? They don't use? Huh? They don't have occasion to use. What, what for? They work every day, right? <laughs> My God. But we women have everything, huh? Flowers, jewelry, oh, I don't have any, but I mean, <laughs> on a Mother's Day or Christmas or something, we do have something, huh? Good, huh? Special. Who can complain? Why is that? Why is that? Well, why, why women are so treated so uh, specially? How, how come the woman has more special treatment? Tell me, a man's point of view, why, why? Why Mother's Day is so important, you know, so glorious, you know, and Father's Day is so, it's a gray, you know, like, it sucks, huh? <laughs> you have any idea? Tell me why. Okay, tell me why you buy, buy flowers for your mother or for your wife. We have a credit card and she just go and buy it and oh. we pay for it. <laughs> Oh, and since it's in your name, it's like you buy it. Wow, that's very clever. <laughs> no wonder my neighbor doesn't let his girlfriend or wife have credit card <laughs> or even cell phone. He says she talks for hours. Long distance or, or, or short distance to her is equal, you know. <laughs> no space, no time. <laughs> These are already above space and time. <laughs> All right, that's it, huh? Men, do you buy anything for your wife? Mother's Day, yeah? Flowers? Perfume and that stuff? Oh, we women love flowers. And it is, um, uh, according to scientific research, uh, flowers does make women feel better. Yeah, maybe it would make men feel better too, but men would know. 
the difference. <laughs> we women appreciate all the goodies, you know. <laughs> Anything good, we know it right away. Diamonds, you know, gold, some small thing like that. <laughs> no, no, no big deal, you know, small. Yeah, and flowers, yeah, it's easy, from the garden. <laughs> Gardeners, you know, <laughs> from somebody else's gardens, yeah. Hmm. But men, they do not appreciate flower, huh? If a woman buy you flowers, would you like it, or you think she's...? <laughs> I, think I, I may have done something wrong. You think something wrong? <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. My God, what's wrong with you men? <laughs> Can't even enjoy flowers. It's so beautiful. Yes, sir, over there. I, I didn't know what is it like to get flowers until recently. Uh, I get flowers from at least a couple of women, and it's it's really nice. Oh, couple of women. Well, no, in in like in like a, a few months period of time, you know. Not... Wow, one month <laughs> at a time, hey? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> one at a time, yes. <laughs> wow, that's that's long, you know. Consider the short lifespan that we have nowadays. Oh, so what happened? Why she gave you flowers? Um, I don't know. I guess uh, I, I am doing something good, you know. Oh, she never it told you? It might be the meditation or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. So you liked it very much? Yeah, it, it was very, very unexpected and a very nice feeling. It was very, yeah. very nice. It's cool. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the reason why women get flowers a lot because we appreciate it. You know, but so men, you know, like to give, or anybody like to give because they know we like it, huh? But if we give to men, maybe they don't like. We know already, so we don't bother waste money, you know, huh? <laughs> no, yeah. Um, okay. Most lady like flower, flower, but. Other lady, they just want men to give them money instead of flowers. You speak for the whole human hood? I mean, yeah. woman hood. <laughs> Most of them just like money? Mm -hmm. Did you ask them? How many did you ask? You make a poll survey or something. I got a, like, I don't really ask them, but I think most of the women do, because I hear on the movie and other stuff about oh. them liking money instead of flowers. Oh. You guys prefer money? No, you heard the wrong TV. <laughs> <laughs> you have to listen to SMTV. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, we like both, honey. The fact is... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we cannot always have everything. So, in case we don't have money, <laughs> flowers better than nothing. <laughs> no? Yeah? Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just my point of view, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, we just like what we don't have. Yeah? Yeah? We don't always have flowers in the house. Eh? It takes a long time to plant it. Eh? And uh, most of us busy, cannot plant it ourselves. Or we don't have a big garden to plant. Yeah? So we just uh, love to have flowers because it looks beautiful, it's refreshing, it boosts your self esteem, and it makes you feel really uh, good, good. Eh? Just, just make you feel good. Even when you're sick, you know, the flowers make you feel better, yeah, quicker. Maybe because the flower has energy, you know, the living energy from plants, and also maybe because of the love of the person who brought the flowers, yeah? You know, there's a good thought, good will, yeah, and that brings good energy. But mostly even if the flowers alone, they look beautiful already, you know. Can you imagine nothing here? And no flowers, huh? Don't look as good, I don't feel as fresh, see? We women appreciate all the things that good. Whatever good we knew immediately. <laughs> no, need to, no need to explain. But men, even we explain, they don't understand. <laughs> 
what for a uh, flower, waste money, <laughs> for example, eh? All right then, so I guess nobody want to ask any, anything, huh? Just sit there, wait for me to ask you, huh? <laughs> so what do you wish then? Anything? Anything special? How many people go tomorrow? All right, yeah. You want to come here? Want to come here so you can see a little more? Come up here. I can sing like this. I've been talking for a long time. Do you want to come back? Ah, the people who go tomorrow. Ah, the one who leaves tomorrow can come up here. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Be careful, my flowers. My beautiful flowers. Is there anybody who not initiate out here? Or is just all initiated people? Huh? Huh? Half initiate can come. And the non initiate cannot come. I have already I already told the, the non initiate people, but they have a family and friends. If they really want to come, they can also come. And they stay outside in the car or in the other, you know, next to the, the building. Just don't come in here. That's all because you meditate and they don't. And they'll be running around and then making trouble for you. And that's the only reason they should not come, the non-initiated people. And that's logical, you understand? But we have a big house here. If people are sincere and if it's your friend or your family, you can bring them. So after meditation, you can go talk to them and eat with them, you know? You don't let them in a hotel, cold and no food, don't know what they eat there. There's no, no vegetarian food in the hotel. I mean, if you, your people come make trouble, then we have the right to ask them to go out, you know? But if they are your family members and they want to be, yeah, or they want to be initiated or they're vegetarian or, you know, things like that, then you should bring them here also, because what do they eat outside? Huh? Two, three days, no food. And then, and then if they're hungry, I feel bad too, you know? I would not know it, but then my stomach will have problem or I have headache. So this is normal, we should welcome them, you know, especially my birthday. If it's a retreat or something, maybe it's different. But this is a birthday once a year, I mean, if it's I'm a normal person. If you bring your friend, I would welcome. Technically speaking, this is a, a temple for God. So anybody who wants to come in, they can come. You understand? Initiate or not initiate. It's just that when we're on retreat, you know, maybe we don't have enough space to accommodate everybody. And it's uncomfortable for them to be here. You know, um, because we sleep in ten, we squeeze together in a one room, but for the guests, it might be uncomfortable, and they don't know what we do in seven days, they just hang around, you know? So maybe it's not convenient, and if they want, they should stay in a hotel more comfortable, because they, if they don't eat vegetarian as well, him here is not too good. But if they want to, they could stay, except they cannot go into the meditation hall disturbing you. Because they don't know what to do, they would walk around. They couldn't even sit, understand? And then disturbing everybody. And we cannot scold them, because they are the guests. You see, so it's n inconvenient for both of us, yeah? And if we ask them to go out, they will ask them, why? Everybody's here, why I have to go out? And then when they're here, they don't know what to do. Unless they want to be initiated, then we give them initiation right away, and then they can join. And the one who wants to be initiated on Sunday, maybe tomorrow, and they could even join today or yesterday already. What's the difference a few days, Mac? Huh? And we should welcome everybody. Uh, not to talk about it's my birthday, you know, I welcome everybody. But sometimes if my birthday happened to be on a big retreat, you know, and they don't want to come here because we don't, we don't have space or something, then it's okay. But this is a free day, you know, I say everybody can come anytime because it's a short notice. You see, some people cannot come today, some people cannot come yesterday, some people cannot come tomorrow. So it's all very free today, free time. It's just so that you can see me. So they just don't have it here, you know, and don't have it there. I cannot. Make your heart if you don't have it. It's very difficult to work with people. 
they just have it, you know, controlling habit. You know, like every retreat we don't have people. That's it, this time it's in. It cannot be different. Even Master say so. Yeah, that's how that's how all the, the you know, the revolution, you know, coup d'etat and everything tops of all the king because they the king wants to change, you know, different and uh, flexible but the the officer, you know, the one who used to run uh, uh, the business for the king, he don't want to change. He gets used to this way. He can't see anything different. And then he continues doing that, and if the king doesn't okay, then he kicks the king out. That's how things happen. But luckily, they cannot kick me out, because <laughs> <laughs> nobody else is there. That's the that's good point, being a master, you know. <laughs> You have to be careful, you know. Don't just sit there and do the same stuff every day, you know. Be wise, be flexible, be alive, okay? Be alive. Don't be a table, huh? Every day, same stuff. Even the table change sometimes, you know. All the table in my house change because my dog, they bite them. <laughs> and the birds also, they love wood, you know. Oh, they can chop this table in no time. If I let all of the birds come up, this one will finish in half an hour. Yeah, everything changed, you know, in my house. So far, all the expensive furniture, all kaput, holes everywhere. And, you know, cushion, all the cotton comes out, you know. <laughs> yeah, I fix it up all the time, then come back out again. And I buy them beautiful bed and all that, and when they're bored, I chew them all up. Yeah, <laughs> puppies, especially puppies. So this is the thing. You see, if you don't change, some dog will come and bite you and make you change. <laughs> yeah. Just habit, you know. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. It's just like your head tells you something, your hand do something else. See what I mean? It's sometimes it happens like that. Yeah? The reaction is different. Oh, never mind. God, 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 God. Any of you bring relatives and friends, tell them to come. Okay, welcome, welcome. It's the house of the Master. It's your house. Understand everybody? Yes. The translator and the group leader make sure your people understand what I'm saying. And next time do the same. Okay? Next time do the same. Unless I kick you out, then it's a different. But I wouldn't do that. You see what I mean? I wouldn't do that. My God, it's so illogical. Hmm? Sometimes it's necessary, like if we have a small center, hey? And we don't have a facility for them. Hmm? Then it's may better that they stay in a nearby hotel and come see us later for their own comfort. They're not used to it with us. They're not used to sleep on the ground, you know, and. Uh, have just a sleeping bag and hard, hard earth and all that, you know, they might get sick because they don't know how to take care of themselves. But we already know, because I teach you how, you see? But they're new, if, if they're not initiated and they're not being taught and they don't have spiritual uh, warmth to keep them, uh, then they might get sick, you see? So they should stay in there. But uh, in here we have enough space. At least you can park your car here and your RV and sleep in the RV, yeah? So there is a different situation. You see, different situation. Well, you understand now, huh? Yeah. Okay? So next time you know the situation, okay? Yeah. This center, or any center they had enough room, always anybody can stay. It just, if they want to accept our condition, you know, like stay in a tent, if they're okay or not okay, and you have to take care of them, make sure they're comfortable. Yeah? Of course, it's a little bit inconvenient for you, yeah, but if you brought them here, you have to be responsible. Huh? Otherwise, don't bring them here. Understand me? Huh? Okay? That's just your problem. You have to sacrifice. And if you bring them here, then you have to sacrifice a little bit of your concentration. You, know, you cannot concentrate well. You have to take care a little bit yeah, of your family and friends. Make sure they're happy. Yeah. So, that's it. If they're not here, you concentrate more on meditation. You don't have to take care of them. And, of course, but that's a different situation, eh? But sometimes you want to bring them here so they can be initiated or they learn to uh, 
meditate or something like that, and it's okay. But make sure they come by their free will, and make sure they understand what they come here for, not that they expect, you know, Disney World here, and I come out as a Mickey Mouse and <laughs> and entertain them every day. Yeah, some people don't understand. They think come here is fun. That's why you look forward to come every time. You think, my God, every time he here retreat, he's jumping and he run away. There must be something fun here, so I want to go with him, have fun. So you let him know, okay? Let him know that. I'm very sorry, okay? Sorry, next time just bring them in, okay? But tell them clearly in the beginning that it's no fun around here. I mean, there is fun, but not like what they expect, you know, like Mickey Mouse come out, you know. <laughs> Because it's Florida, next to, <laughs> I was saying, yeah, Mickey World. So they might think we are a franchise, you know? <laughs> yeah, sometimes we wear like animal costumes, yeah, and they don't know that we sit our butt out for, we sit until our butt fall out, you know, for, for seven days until we get that hat, you know? <laughs> they think every day like that. They only saw the picture, you know, the fun picture. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. The only reason if we don't want them here is if they don't feel uncom if they don't feel comfortable. That's it. that's the only reason. Yeah. Or if they come here and expecting something else instead of spiritual. Yeah. And or they want to make trouble. Yeah? Uh, demanding too much the, the, the what that we don't have here. Otherwise, it's, it's okay. If they quiet. They sit somewhere, read books. Yeah. Uh, relax on the hammock or sit in their car or sleep in somewhere, it's okay. If they can bear the life that we have, then it's okay. Yeah. All for their comfort, ne? And for yours. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. A any other question? Um, recently I was wondering how to distinguish between uh, negative thinking or when the Master is trying to warn us about something bad that will happen or could happen? Hmm. Or is it... I, I'm having trouble distinguishing between that. Will the Master tell you? Well, you know, the intuition comes sometimes mm -hmm. and it's hard to tell if it's, a, if it's the mind is doing the negative thinking about the certain situation or <clears throat> it's an intuition coming to, it, to warn about it, something. It depends. If you have encountered that kind of situation before and it came out negative, so it could be that, uh, you know, your prejudice, yeah, but if it's a brand new and your intuition comes just suddenly from nowhere, you know, then it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. hmm? It uh, depends on situation. Huh? If you have been yes. talking negative about that already with somebody else, or somebody mm -hmm. else give you this kind of negative thinking, yeah, it's then just maybe. But <coughs> if it comes just from nowhere, all clear. Yeah, it's just so much noise is going around, it's hard to distinguish something. Well, then too bad. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to wait to find out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if uh, you think Master is warning you that you're going to fall from the ladder, and then wait until you fall, and then you know. It is <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, take precaution anyway, okay? Mm -hmm. If you feel that way, then take precaution eh? as much as you can. But doing what you have to do, but rethinking whether there is a better way that you have forgotten to look, you see, or you may be overlooking some detail that is important. You understand? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Recheck, recheck. It's always, um, make sure it's never harm, you see, make sure, yeah. For example, if you want to do some project and you, you were okay, you think it's okay, but suddenly you have a, a pre-warning or bad feeling about it, then you recheck your project one by one to see whether you're missing something, mm -hmm. yeah, or something should be changed. Yeah, you see, when you recheck it, you know. Yes. For example, <coughs> me. Also, also I, I have complained last time about having uh, not too many experiences, mm -hmm. and Master fixed that because... <laughs> hey, don't say it now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm having a lot of experiences, too but much now? I, I, uh, they are not very pretty. Yeah, they're not. So I'm thinking maybe Master was protecting me from, from seeing that before. 
Uh -huh. And mostly I'm, I'm having a lot of, even in dreaming or even in meditation, I'm at a place where <clears throat> everything is really flimsy and, and it, it looks like everything is very, uh, <clears throat> um, everything I touch turns into dust. Even like buildings, if, if I touch the, the rail of a oh, don't staircase. don't touch me, huh? <laughs> 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 Get away from me, ma. <laughs> no, that's just your so, your past negative uh, action. Yeah, yes, I, I was I was wondering what this signifies, and <clears throat> could it be that that my my past framework of of life is being demolished? Could, <laughs> could it signify that? I know. Your past destructive pattern, you know, I come in back sometimes. So mm -hmm. you have to be um, erased by by the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you <coughs> keep doing that again. Yes. You used to use magic power <coughs> to destroy things. Yeah. And now, if uh, if we don't solve that, mm -hmm. it will stay there. I did that. Yeah. In the past. Really? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, it's okay. It's that's past. not nice. <laughs> past now. Oh, everybody <laughs> has past sometimes. Every saint has a past. So now we are just working it out so that everything mm -hmm. happened in dreams. So there's no trace left from this karma. So you can elevate yourself. Right? Yes, and and you know I'm I'm glad that it's happening and I'm I'm willing to go through it. And it's okay. It won't be long. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Also, um, when I am in the dream or in the meditation, um, sometimes I am not very nice to people, and I wouldn't act like that as I am here Outside, right now. Yeah, yeah. But in the dream, it's like it's running on automatic. I can't, I can't really control anything. Just, I told you, working out the past. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Oh well, at least you see something is interesting, better than nothing yeah, like yeah, before. They, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when you bore bad movies, better than no movies. <laughs> so I just worry about a little bit. I'm not really hurting real people in that, no, in that no, experience, no, no, right? No, no, no. It's just, just a, a vision or a dream, right? Just working out your past tendency. Okay. So to clean it <clears throat> out. Yeah. Yes, because it's not that you want to do it now. It's just you have some residues. You have to clean it so you can get rid of it. You yeah. know, and yeah. you can go up a little higher, huh? Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Master. You're welcome. Hmm. Master, um, uh, I'm in my very uh, difficult uh, time of my life, and uh, I've been trying to uh, meditate and pray and very hard, uh, but it seems to me that I was not able to get any hint or any uh, guidance. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really know what to do. Um, Can you talk about it here? Well, um, you know, my professional career has come to a, a, a very uh, critical uh, point. And, like what? Uh, um, You're fired? Uh, yeah, and I may not be able to find another job. If what I don't kind of job you do? Uh, I'm a physician. What kind of physician who doesn't? <laughs> well, it's just a very personal problem, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I have a problem with my supervisor. Oh, okay, and, you uh, get to another hospital. Yeah, but he's writing bad words about me, so that's obstructing my... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. But he doesn't know where you... Oh, he would have to recommend you, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Couldn't you um, make peace with him, apologize or something, even though you are not I wrong? Did. And I, still doesn't work? It did not work out. Wow. Well, where, where are you working? America? Uh, yeah. Oh, no problem. My God. We have so many other places to go. Huh? You're an American citizen. You can go somewhere, some other country to work. He can write still, huh? He still can write a recommend letter? Well, he's not going to write a good letter. Even if you go abroad? I don't know. I didn't ask him. But he, he had a set letter that, uh, that's already written up. He already sent a letter? Well, he had a letter that's already written oh, up. Oh, my God. 
So what do we do now? Uh, you have many volunteer, you know. You can go do volunteer job. How about volunteer for the SM company, you know. <laughs> no pay, but uh, a lot of merit. <laughs> can I make a living doing that? Uh, no. Do you have family, a big family? Uh, no, I, I have family, yeah. How many kids? Two. Two. Your wife can do something? Uh, yeah. Okay, then let her work. You stay home, enjoy flowers, and... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let her work for a change. If you can't work, you can't help it. You know, I mean, look here. Tell her, look here, I have tried, but look like Buddha don't want me to work, so maybe I just stay home and you send me flowers on Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse the role. Can she work? She earn enough money? No, huh? Well, she can work. Not, not like uh, when you earn, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Well, difficult situation. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's maybe you should go somewhere else, huh? Do something new with your life, my goodness. Yeah, even go sell tofu, you won't die, you know. Mm -hmm. But of course, because you have such a talent, you know, you're a professional, so you should seek. While selling tofu, you should write application every <laughs> other country, yeah? And uh, if they accept you, you just... Uh, sell the tofu booth and then go. <laughs> I'll pack it with you in case, <laughs> in case it happened again. They eat tofu in Africa, you know, or China. <laughs> I, I would try my problem uh, myself, but uh, I was just wondering, I was so worried about my, my, my career, and every time I meditate, it just uh, can concentrate. I know, don't worry, you'll find it. If you really want your job again, you get it, okay? Um, uh, wait a little while, okay? Meditate more, yeah. Oh, my God. You thought you have a profession, no? Nah? As a physician, it would be safe and sound and secure, yeah? It's not always, huh? Yeah, because our parents also always are God in us, you know? You gotta learn to have to be somebody, be a doctor. Everybody loved their son to be a doctor. And look at this son. <laughs> He come to another doctor for a problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, but sometimes at the end of a road, you know, we find another outlet, nah? Or we go to the sea with a boat instead of driving. Everything will happen differently, nah? But if you really want to stick to the route again, then you get it. <laughs> Just maybe better you change, yeah? Everything is exciting. There's no need to always do one thing or stay in one place. It, seem, it seems safer, yeah, but it's boring. Hmm? Sometimes God wants us to have a life, you know, not just a living. You understand? <laughs> not just earn a living, but have a life. Nah? Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, do something with your life. You have one life. Oh, yeah, you know better. <laughs> Blessing in the sky, crying like, well, Master, I don't have any <laughs> experience. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's difficult when we, in, when we are in a hardship. It's difficult to think that way, but it is. Sometimes it's really a blessing. Yes, sir? Good morning, Master. How are you? Good morning. May, uh, I, ask, yeah. may, I, may I ask a question? Sure, sure. I um, normally don't have a lot of time to uh, go to retreats and what have you. And uh, just a small question. Now that I'm in the presence, in your presence, uh, what do you recommend as far as uh, maximizing, you know, my reception to you? I want to be able to, you know, what do I do when I'm meditating? You know, I know I'm not supposed to say the five names in your presence. Is there any other thing I can do? Help other people to enlighten, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the more you help people, the more enlightened. <laughs> Just like investing money, you know. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh, you know what? Ah, Shabana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you say Shabana? English. I forgot. Huh? 
Meal time? Lunch? Like work off hour, you know? Off hour? Huh? What? Free time. Free time. Break time? No, no break. Finish. <laughs> Okay, it's like when you when you work in and say, oh my God, you know, it's time to go home. <laughs> okay, have a good uh, lunch, hey? Lunch now, right? Yeah, have a very very good, delicious, tasty.